right. Hey, everybody. Thank you for those of you who came early and joined the pre-show. We've been having fun. The Finland battle is still raging on on this channel. <laughs> and someone said to change your mind. That's an entirely different channel, but thanks for the laugh. Um, we're so glad that you all are joining us. Please pardon the humidity here. Um, <laughs> it's not that bad. No, no, it's not. As, that's because I did something to it. Otherwise, it'd be Bambi hair for those of you who like Bambi I've got on this my channel. humidity hair going right now. Hey, Nancy and Chris and Starling and Greg and Judy and Kirsten and Anna Corinne and Graham and Ascertain and I already said Anna Corinne and Stacy and Michael, that looks like Michael, Jean, glad to have you, hope you enjoy your fish and chips, and Zach, my funny guy, um, who am I missing? Who am I missing? I don't know. Uh, Patricia. Juliet, did you get her? No, but you did. <laughs> um, Jody, and if I, Cindy, oops. Uh, and Cosmic Slice, I did see you, and Jody, and Anthony. Hey, Anthony, so you've gotten some coffee, and then coffee and ice cream sandwiches, and Lily, there's Lily. I think I'm all caught up. If I haven't mentioned you, I'm super glad you're here. Uh, Gail, you know, I really wish YouTube would make the chat larger so I can actually see your names, but I can't. Anyway, hello, Nick and Teresa slipping in. So we have a question before we get started with our training today. Where did the question go? Okay, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream sandwich? In so this not, time. not ice cream, yeah. but ice cream sandwich. And Cosmos Slice, I'm blaming you for this question because you made me hungry. <laughs> I think as we don't have any in the house, we're going to have to go to the store and go, yay, we went somewhere today. We were also talking to the pre-show about um, just going for two days ago, Andy and I just went for a drive to go for a drive to say we went somewhere. So what's your favorite ice cream sandwich? They don't have it. What don't they have? Um, brownie batter. <gasps> Anna Corinne, you don't know what an ice cream sandwich is? Oh, you sweet thing. You oh, need to come to Texas. That's horrible. So, so an ice cream well, there's lots. There's lots. And because typically an ice cream sandwich was like a chocolate cookie with a white vanilla in the middle, and you put the two little bready kind of cookies together and make a sandwich. But now they have like M&M, two M&M cookies stuck together with vanilla ice cream. They have Oreo cookies stuck together, chocolate chip cookies, anything that could be a cookie and you put ice cream in the middle. Now it can't be the runny goo, it has to be like solidified it's be solid ice. ice cream. It's solid, so that when you're biting it, but you have to eat it fast, otherwise. Well, certainly in Texas in the summer you have to, because it's gonna melt otherwise. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And then there's also, just like some people have ways they uh, eat. I think all of our European people do not know what an ice cream sandwich is. Holy cow. <sighs> Europe, you guys like conquered the world. How did you not know what an ice cream sandwich was? How did oh, you miss that part? You're gonna have to go over there and pull up a picture of an ice cream okay, sandwich. Okay, I'll, I'll pull up a picture of an ice cream sandwich. Yeah, yeah. You keep talking about ice cream sandwiches. Mine's, mine, by the way, is Mississippi mud pie. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you're like from Europe. No, I know what an ice cream sandwich is. Okay, we gotta right, switch so we gotta that switch over. over here. But I don't know what a Mississippi mud pie is. So here are some different ice cream sandwiches. Now up. That's the traditional one that he's waving his. Let me let me magic marker this. <gasps> there we go. There we go. Okay, so this one right here is the traditional one that everybody thinks of as an ice cream sandwich, and that one probably for most of our adult lives were what it is. But then they started adding different flavors to it. So you could get like a Neapolitan ice cream sandwich. Oh, look at those cookie ones. Just wait, just wait, oh. just wait. And here, I think you might even be able to see a cookies and cream ice cream sandwich. But they come, oh, here's here's a better representation over here. They come like wrapped in this, you know, thin paper foil. Uh -huh. You can actually get them out of vending machines. Like my high school had an ice cream sandwich <laughs> vending machine. It was 35 cents for an ice oh, cream sandwich. Oh, okay. Kirsten said that they have them in Sweden. Oh, whoo. Oh, what are they called then if they're not called ice cream sandwiches? Um, Kirsten, tell us what, what these things are called if they're not called ice cream sandwiches. So more recently then, since you know we're talking about the history of the ice cream sandwich, we have gone to an actual cookie as opposed to like a cookie bar thing. Oh. And so you have cookies 
being with ice cream sandwich in between it. And then sometimes now you can have all sorts of ice cream. Yeah, um, all flavors are flavors. So, particularly when you go to like your ice cream shop that makes them, you can get whatever kind of ice cream so you want. So I want a chocolate chip cookie, top and bottom, with brownie batter ice cream in the middle. I like brownies like a ton and a half. So anyway, oh, Sandy said she's starving and she logs in and we're not talking about family search, we're talking about ice cream. Anyway, we're just ch chit chatting to give people a chance to Hop on in, get together before we dive in. So this now we're going to sippy mud pie right sippy there. Sippy mud right pie there. ice cream. I know. Okay. We always do this. He starts typing and I'm like, oh, it's just a chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. So, well, yeah, it's like chocolate. Got, got brownie in it. What else does Mississippi mud pie have? <laughs> so we're all going to be running out and getting some ice cream. Oh, they're called Chip Witch. Chip Witch. Is that like a name brand? That sounds like that, that might be a name brand. Cool. Let me, let me, uh, <laughs> hopefully, as we're doing this live, we don't have anything crazy. Chip Witch ice cream. Okay, okay. So it's a cookie. Okay, yeah, so it See, is. See, they there are so go. smart. Okay, they, they have they, real cookies. They, they don't, they, they bypass the whole, like, fake cookie thing that uh -huh. we did here, and they just went straight to the real cookie. Yes, chip yes, witch. yes. We will, we The will original make, Chip Witch. We will make sure we wear our masks when we go to the grocery stores. Anyway. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, enough talking about chipping. We need to get to what we're going to talk about today. Sorry, I'm just fascinated by the chip witches. <laughs> get off. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. What are we going to do? I can see why they're called a chip witch because they're like chocolate chips sense. on a ice cream sandwich. Mm -hmm. So you get your chip and your witch. Got it. All right, here we go. All right, so welcome to Family History Fanatics. If it's your first time here, type in first timer. And for those of you who are a channel members, a big heart thank you for joining the channel memberships. We'll be talking a little bit about what that is a little bit later. But on Family History Fanatics, we'd like to help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestor stories along the way. And if family history isn't fun, you are doing it wrong. So those of you who think family history is fun, is fun, go ahead and tell us it is in the live stream. Jane, glad you just slipped in. All right, so today's topic is search strategies for family search. So in previous videos, we have talked about how to um, explore hints and go beyond the hints. And we tried to do a little bit of um, go into the browsing of the catalog. I owe you a video that got caught up because family search was being wonky. We are hoping it won't be wonky during this live stream. Otherwise, we'll just smile at each other and talk about sandwiches. Anyway, um, so we're going to dive into some search strategies that you may or may not have used over on Family Search. If you have a tip or a strategy that we haven't talked about, then type tip or in big capital letters and then tell us your, your search tip. If you have a question, then put a Q and then your question. We're only going to take questions on family search or research strategies. If you came here for DNA, that's a different day. Sorry. Okay. And don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already, so mm -hmm. that YouTube will share this with other people as well. Uh huh. Oh, pa Patricia just made my heart sing. Hi. Right, what did she say? She says y'all are fun, so that makes family history fun. Well, good. Thank you. You're the sweetest ever. <gasps> I oh, Teresa's gonna watch you again tonight with bags. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> what do you mean, maybe? <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about search strategies. Now, uh, I hope many of you know that you can use a asterisk. Go ahead and type a name and throw in an asterisk. So when you're searching on Family Search, make it bigger, please, too. When you're searching on Family Search in the search box, you can use an asterisk in a name. Let's say you're gonna type the name uh, Brown. You could type BRW asterisk. Okay, and then what it can do is it can... BRW is not right. B-R-O-W. You didn't say the O. Oh, I'm sorry. But yes, B-R-O-W. Yes. Bro. So now you can pick up... Well, I want the N in there because the asterisk can pick up brown with nothing else. It can pick up browns with an S, brown with an E, brown Lee, browning, brown, brown... All kinds of versions of browns. Brownie yeah. batter ice cream. Oh, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> if you named your kid brownie batter ice cream, that's a little too much love for the brownies. All right, so, oh, 
Brown <laughs> eyes. Oh, but see, that's an Indian name. There you go. I had not planned that in advance. So the asterisk replaces anything. Now the asterisk can go at the beginning of the letter. This is particularly useful for when I'm searching for Geislers. We've talked about this in previous live streams. Um, Geisler, that first letter could actually be a K. Um, and so you're gonna do it in the middle. I'm gonna do the middle one. We didn't plan this ahead, so this is totally live. So we can place it in the middle and in that you can get the G-E-I-S-L-E-R, G-E-I-S-S-L-E-R, G-E-I-S-Z-L-E-R, G-E-I-T-C-H-L-E-R. I've seen that before. All kinds of craziness. You can also put it at the beginning and it will replace lots of different letters. So now we can find Keisler. There you go. And then um, is it K-I-E or K-L? Well, this is K-L. Kleisler. Kleisler. Ooh. Had you ever thought about that one? But there's your Geisler. Hey, Walter, how are you? And Virgil. So that asterisk is very handy. You can put it anywhere. You can actually use a combination of them. But you can also use a, a question mark, yes? Now, a question mark just substitutes one letter. So let's say you're trying to use, there you go, Geisler. We don't want the Kleislers. We either want the Geislers, the C, E-I-S-L-E-R, K-E-I-S-L-E-R, and so on and so forth. So it'll just replace one letter, and you can put it at the beginning, the middle, and the end. It doesn't really matter where you stick it. Now, somebody pointed out in here that for, like, your common, uh, whoops. The umlauts? Nope. The, uh. Ah. Your Hansons. Uh-huh. There is a Hanson with an E. Mm-hmm. But it also picked up the H-A-U-S. Yes, because it's doing some it's doing some of its uh, smart searching anyway mm -hmm. to find similar things. And there's the HSOs. Mm -hmm. Hey, Glenn, first timer from Canada. You're going to have to get to know Cosmic Slice and Greg. They're both from Canada. Glad to have you here. All right, so that's that's a quick overview of the wild cards. But we're going to talk about some of the strategies that. I didn't learn until 15 years into genealogy and they really became handy when online genealogy went in the 2000s. So the first one is a last name search. So I want you to go ahead and make sure you've cleared out. Do you want to switch places so that I can sit there easier? Give us a second. <laughs> I told you it's live and some totally people, unscripted. Some, some people doubt that we do our live streams live. But many of you have seen our premiere and know this is, this is the live craziness. Okay, so we're going to do a last name search. And in this last name search, we're going to search for the last name Townsend. And we're just going to do Townsend without the funny characters. Townsend. Townsend. Now, if I click that, we're going to have like a half a million. Okay, no, not a half a million. Almost two million results from all over the world. Now, how many of you, tell us in the chat, want to search through two million Townsends? Do you? No, definitely not. No. Two million is going to be a lot. You know, let me let me just do a quick math while we're thinking here. Okay. So two million, okay, times by let's say uh, ten seconds for each one. Ten seconds for each one divided by sixty seconds <laughs> in a minute divided by sixty minutes divided by eight hours divided by 365 so if you wanted to look through if you wanted to look through all two million of those you are going to spend eight hours a day every single day for the next two years and that's if you can look at them 10 seconds per person so yeah yeah, yeah that's so a, we're not gonna do that that is a stacy Yes. Double hop key stick, no. Yes. All right. So 2,000, way too many. All right. Two so, million. Two million. Well, Patricia forgot to add some extra zeros. It's all good. Maybe 2,000 is too many. That entirely possible. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to That's look true. for Townsend's in a specific location. So now I want you to go to any... Actually, I want you to go to residence. Okay. We okay. could do birth. We could do marriage. I want to do residence. And we're going to type in... Franklin County, Ohio. Engineer much? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. He engineers quite a bunch. So now we're down to 41,500 and some odd searches. That's getting much better, better. Than, than 2 million. Getting better. Now, why do you think in the world I'm going to look for all the towns in Franklin County, Ohio in all the particular records? Because you're related to them all. Well, yes and no. 
I have a specific question. So um, this is how I went and began looking for extra kin for William James Townsend. No record identifies him in his family, but I'm trying to figure out who his kin could be. So 41,000 is still way too much. So what I wanted to do is go ahead and do um, add the year 1880. So and I just want 1880. 1880 in the year. Now, yeah. we've got to add it to both of these because there's a from and a to. Yeah, go ahead and add it to both. Now, why am I doing 1880? Anybody think they know why I'm just doing 1880? Because somebody was alive in 1880. Well, yes. Watch out for towns and spelling. With an yes. H. Yes, you are correct. There are multiple ways to spell that. Yes. You got it, Chris. Spot on. And Glenn, you are from Canada and you figured it out. So there is the 1880 census. And I know that William James Townsend is there and he's married and he has kids. And in that particular census, it told me where his parents were from. So we're going to go ahead and I'm scooting over. <laughs> and your, your face was cut off. We're going to go ahead and limit to 1880. Did you do that already? Yeah. Now, how many do we have now? 15,000. 15,000. Yes. So this is much better. But even though we put Franklin County, Ohio in there, Family Search doesn't think I really just want to look at Franklin County, Ohio. So Why they're going to give me lots of other places near Franklin, Ohio. Are they? they are. The further you go, the more they're Oh, St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. So I no, know. No, that's Columbus, Ohio. This is military service. Mm hmm. So what we're going to do is I want to look for Franklin. Uh, Folks in Franklin County, Ohio in 1880, I want to make sure it's just Franklin. So I want you to go up and do the exact place check mark, please. Okay. But also the other thing I was seeing here is this isn't just the 1880 census. This is right. also getting into death records and mm -hmm. marriage records and military yeah. service. So. Yeah. Okay. So we want to do the exact. I want to limit to the exact. What about if they don't have Franklin County? What if they just have Franklin, Ohio? I'm not worried about that right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. I need to lower this number down. Now we're down to 92. 92 is a heck of a lot better, okay? So I can go ahead and click on collections. And now we see where these 92 are from. 44 of them are going to be in the 1880 census. Go ahead and click on that. And I am going to go look at those resorts. Yep, filter those. So now, one of the great things about the 1880 census is it's not exactly 44 individual records you're looking at, it's because it's more families. And one of the great things I was able to find when I was looking through this was I found these other townlies, and some of them were born, hey, there's a Scottish dude, <laughs> um, but there was some that were born in Maryland. And when I saw that, that was a big clue that these are potential relatives of mine. I also was able to see there was, you just went past the Groveport, the one you were just on for Perry. Groveport. Uh -huh. There's a J-N-O, a John, and then there was a Perry, and there was a lot of these people clustered in Groveport, which is very close to where William was, and then I was able to pick up extra folks. So when you're trying to do like a one-name study, it helps to do a search to find other relatives. You can also use this for when people butcher first names and they get the last name right. So this is a handy search strategy. So let me know in the chat if you've used this successfully or if you this is the first time you've ever heard of doing a surname search for a record. So I'm just looking to see if there's a butchered first name in any of these that we wouldn't have been able to find otherwise. Lulu's not butchered, but Lulu could be a few other things. Right, absolutely. Now and thankfully my Townsend's have some pretty named common. John and Mary and William. And Emma. Yeah, some pretty boring names, but boring names are kind of easy to spell and easy to find. So it's a pretty handy thing. So many times. Oh, good. See, I'm, I'm glad you used this. Now, if you don't have, if you've exhausted all of your fear folks using this spelling, then you can go do the wild card strategies. You can do the, um, the asterisk by the S, and then you can have Townshend. Or Townsend. Uh huh, Townsend. Um, you can also take off the D and, and put an asterisk where the E is, and then you get town sun. I've seen that a lot where um, it's not towns in at all. You could do it that way. So you can add more people into your search strategy if you're not finding your individuals. All right. Now, what 
can, we can use the asterisk down here. Like for instance, let's say that we don't know it's Franklin County, but it's Frank something or other. Oh, look at that, mm -hmm. 75, we've added 20 more. Well, and then sometimes you'll get in, uh, you'll get a location and it'll say Franklin, you don't really recognize that it's Franklin County. Sometimes it's Franklin, Warren, go up, that right at the top, there was Franklin, comma, Warren County, Ohio. Oh yeah, because this is a city and then a mm. county. Yep. Franklin and Warren County as opposed mm -hmm. to Franklin and Franklin County. Yep. Not yeah. very confusing at all if you live in Ohio. No, not at all. Oh, but there is, uh, I am blanking out right now, I think it might be Hamilton Township. There are 44 of those in Ohio. 44 Hamilton. They really liked uh, Alexander Hamilton, didn't apparently. they? Apparently. Apparently. If that's the right one I'm thinking of, but yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Sandra has used that technique a lot. Um, I'm glad you guys have used that technique a lot. So whenever you have a specific question and you're trying to find extra kin in the location, go ahead and do a surname search because that could be very helpful. Now, we're going to do a first name search. So clear that all out. I'm going to reset it all. And I think we're going to break family search. Type the name Elizabeth. With a Z. Yeah. I know there's Elizabeth with an S. We've had someone join in. 3.2 million. Yeah. So you're looking at three and a half years of searching through all of those. But that's just in the 1880 census. But I don't want to be in the 1880 census. No, we're census. not in the 1880. We're in everything. Okay. Well, no, it's filtered to the 1880 census. Oh, it is filtered. There's three million Elizabeths in 1880? <laughs> it gets worse. Go to a collection. I didn't think the United States was big enough to have three million in 1880. Search all collections, and we want to actually go to 1900 because I lost my nope, ancestor. see, it broke it. She's I know. under more information. I know, I know. We're gonna break it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna reduce it a little bit. So let me tell you what happened for when I had to go looking for Elizabeth. I tried every variation of their last name. I searched just by her last name, and my Elizabeth went missing. She was alive. I found her in the 1880 census. She was not one of the lucky se almost 7,000 to be in the 1890 census fragments that survived, but she did also show up in 1910 census. So she exists somewhere. So I tried Elizabeth and I broke the system. So let's put in a birth date. A bir oh, her birth date was about 1818. And Ooh. notice I said about. So we need to put a range in. Okay. So let's do 1816 to 1820. I was going to do 1815 to 1820. That's fine. Don't look up Hannah. Okay, we won't look up Hannah. <laughs> 40,222. 40 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40, 40 million. million. 40 million. Yeah, we're not going to do that. So now we need to look and um, bring her down a little bit. She was in, we're going to put in a residence because we're looking for a specific residence. She was, should have been look, living in Licking County, Ohio. And yes, I still hate saying Licking County, Ohio. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get over that. And she was living there. I'm specifically interested in the 1900 census. So we're down. Sorry. Michael's got a nice comment that uh, I found out a nickname for Joanna is Juggy. <laughs> okay. You just stole the show on that one. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad that none of our kids are named Joanna right now. <laughs> well, actually, I'm glad our family... If those of you who are Karens, I'm so sorry your name is Karen. You're getting a bad rap this week on social media. Anyway, okay. Back to Elizabeth. <laughs> so, I'm looking for her in the 1900 census. So, but we're down to 80,000 Elizabeth's floating around. But I want to know where she went in the 1900s. So let's go to and filter to the 1900 census. Hopefully. The 1900 census. Uh -huh. Okay, so I got to show all of these. Yep. There's the 1900 census. There's 67 of Woo! them. We can do 67. 67 Elizabeth, born about 1818, living in Licking County, Ohio. And That's Anthony is cropping in, up on about the That's a lot of Elizabeths with mm -hmm. that specific information. In that, I mean, mm -hmm. Licking County is not like this, you know million 
Pershing no. County. It's a pretty rural location just north of Columbus. So let's go ahead and go forward a couple of pages. Probably, you, I mean, at this point, you are just scrolling, 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 trying to see if anything jumps out at you. Okay? So, so go. You know what would be really useful? It doesn't have it. But it would be really useful if you could, like, alphabetize this. Sort by last, sort name. By last name. That would be great. That mm -hmm. would be awesome. Or sort by uh, birth year or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> East of Columbus, not north. I'm sorry, Stacy. <laughs> Northish. No, it's totally east. If you look at the highways like straight going straight east? out, yeah, it's straight east. I remember because I was looking at the map and. It's... My bad. My... Oh, and east is that way, not that way. Okay. I failed geography. Well, from where we are, east is that way. Whatever. Okay, back to it. So we're looking. So with this sixty-seven, I'm. I can deep dive into these records looking for my Elizabeth, or I can scroll through many pages. You need to go down. I need to get to the fast forward button. Oh, the fast forward button. Yeah. Okay. So go next. Okay, we uh, we've got problems here. Why? Because Elizabeth isn't showing. There were four. There were four pages of results. Oh, that's for my because Elizabeth. I changed it from twenty to fifty, so I could see oh, more. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I also click. I want to just have Elizabeth. So I don't want Alice's and whatever the other ones. So click. Go to exact at the top, please. Oh, go to exact. Yeah. Exact. Uh huh. Now, if they have two first names and you click on this exact, do you have to have both the first names, or will uh, it look no, for just, either one of them? I think it'll just look for either one. So we went and there, when I did it before, there was a page four, and this is working. Go figure. This okay. is okay. Ice cream. We're back to ice cream. We're going to talk about that because we understand. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's live. Oh my heck! What did I get wrong with my Elizabeth? Hold on. We're gonna we're gonna cheat and go to. Uh... Well, 1818. What the heck? <laughs> it worked when I did it right before we went live. Go figure. Well, let it's... me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find uh, it. Hold on. Where is it? Right there. Oh. Oh. Oh, her name's... Okay. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Don't put... Don't... Okay. You can't do exact because her name's spelled wrong. Yeah, sorry about that. See, I'm cheating because I know the answer. But that's wrong too. It's an S. <laughs> How oh, about did you put S. an asterisk in there? It's an S. Oh, we'll so catch let's it. Put an asterisk. Uh huh. There we go. Woo! Woo! Got her. Smack that down. And I probably hurt everybody's ears. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so as I was growing through, this was on page four. So I actually had to do this search and I got to page four and all of a sudden I'm like, wait, blue? I know blues. Not blues clues, but blues. It turns out Elizabeth had a daughter named, can you guess? Hint, hint. Matilda? Matilda Weekly. And Matilda Meek Weekly married a? William? Nope. John? John Blue. William's her son. Oh, okay. And so Elizabeth is hiding over in the census record. And just to show that the enumerator wasn't a moron, somebody went and told him wrong information or her. I'm thinking it was a him. She is indexed with the last name Blue. Where is she? Okay, if you see Blue, let me know. Oh, okay. Matilda Blue. Well, she has a line. No, but that's these ones have lines. That's just saying it's the exactly. same as above. Exactly. It has a line. So for whatever reason, her last name is recorded as blue. But this is, says it's the grandmother of the head of the household. Mm-hmm. But she's actually the grandmother of the Will again. So it sounds like William, William answered the door. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. So How old was William then? William is 17. 17, so it's not like it's a five-year-old answering the no. door. It's, hey, this person's almost an adult. We'll, uh, we'll take whatever information we can from him. Yeah. So when you're looking on your records, sometimes you have, I mean, when you see that line, you think, oh, well, this must be the grandmother. Okay, that doesn't quite work. Um, so her last name must be Blue. 
will know if you you could be barking up the tree for a very long time so sometimes they're oh. hiding under different last names we don't have the screen there oh <laughs> all this time we're like showing you all this great stuff and you've missed it all okay so we'll go back we'll go back my bad <laughs> <laughs> there's Elizabeth Blue, like we were talking about. So here's Elizabeth. Here's Elizabeth Blue. <laughs> it's live, everybody. And then we went to the image. We went to the image, and then when we zoomed in, there was a nice, lovely little... <laughs> now, like, can you... Yes. Yes. We're, yes. we're done cheating. We're going to show you the screen now. <laughs> we're going to actually enjoy the conversation there we go all right but i can't see this is now what i, I do again. in um it, there there you go this is why we do pre-recorded videos so when we mess up this bad we can catch it and then you never know the difference because we mess up bad <laughs> a lot real bad i just filmed four videos this morning and has his name on it and not mine oh that's bad <laughs> So, in the coming videos, I have to get really creative by refunding my name on it. Because <laughs> I'm not refilming them. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So, there's Matilda. What, so, we're going to go through and show you again. So, there's John Blue, and there's Matilda, and there's William. Now, it says head, wife, son, grandmother. Now, according to the instructions... This, Elizabeth, should be the grandmother of the head of the household, John Blue. But Elizabeth is the grandmother of William. Yes. And we see that William is 17. So we see that William's 17. So it's a good chance that he answered the door. And... Yeah. And you know, they, some of us have brain farts. I think they had a brain fart. And I don't know how they messed up Elizabeth having the last name Blue yeah. instead of Weekly. But she could also be hiding because her husband was not so great. So, you know. Well, he might have just said, oh, that's my grandma. Exactly. It's my grandma Elizabeth and or they something just, like that. And they just wrote it down and figured it was blue. So, sometimes when you have an ancestor go missing, you do a first name search. But you get millions and millions of results. So, you have to find ways to narrow it down. And if that doesn't solve it, then you have to cast a wider, wider net. And maybe you need to go west to Columbus. Ha, I learned <laughs> West, no, east. No, Licking is east of Columbus. That's what she said. Right, so what's the west? If I'm looking in east, if I'm looking in uh, Licking, maybe she went oh, to Columbus okay. and went we west. Go west. I know some geography. <laughs> All right, so that that was the, um, that is a first name search. So we've done uh, wild called searches, last name searches, first name searches, and the last one I'm gonna share, share with you is the one that it didn't ever become handy until online genealogy happened. And this is a parental search. So we're going to use the couple we used not so long ago here on the channel. We're gonna use Walter Nichols and Jane, no, I forget her last name. Walter mm -hmm. Nichols. And for all of our, our viewers from UK, she they were living in Cornwall, England. Oh, that's new. Hey, what? not this is new. They didn't have the birthplace before. Oh, you're right. So take that part out. Take that part out. Yes. So Walter and Jane, just see how many millions. How many Walter Nichols and Janes? How many Walters married to Jane? And then you have to, we're, we need to get out of the 19. Oh, uh -huh. we're in the 1900 census. But there's 225. All right. So now what you need to do is what am I looking for? Well, we knew that these people were in mm -hmm. Cornwall, Egan, but let's not do the residents. Let's do any. And uh -huh. that way we may be able to pick up birth, marriage, and death in Cornwall, England. Okay, so now we're down to 407 just in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. There's a Walter and a Jane. Walter and a Jane, Walter and a Jane, Walter and a Jane. Walter and a Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting into Durham, Hall, Yorkshire. So we're getting, we're casting wider than we need to be. Yes? Yeah. Okay. 
So then you can just start playing around with things. Maybe you want to, instead of doing any place in Cornwall, then you're going to go and do the birth has to be Cornwall and take off the any place. Now this isn't popping up the uh, it's super not. special it stuff. It used to, but it's not now. I don't know why. So now we're just looking for things, people that were born in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. There's our St. Kevin. There you go. St. Kevin. Mm -hmm. And some of these, there's not a birth location listed, and that's probably why it's showing up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or? They're pulling up christenings rather than birth. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So is it perfect? No. But this is one strategy that I've used to pick up um, extra children that I didn't know a couple had. Um, I would put in, and I wouldn't put in their first er, first name or last name. I would just play with the birth, the death, and the marriage locations and just have the parents um, in there. If I knew her last name, I could throw that in. But most more times than not, if I just put the husband's first and last name and her first name, then I can go through and then start filtering it down and finding extra siblings that I hadn't known before. So, so Starling's got a good question. How do you feel about family search not showing race on a lot of their search results? You know that is a pain in the neck. It really is. is. Is it because the race wasn't indexed or is it because the race isn't even on that record? You'd have to ask Family Search on that one. Okay. I know when we're indexing these these days, we are um, able, we are indexing the race. I don't know why they don't show it here. I think when the record comes up, when you actually get to a record and it had race on it, um, we're my uh, friend was indexing death certificates and I was teaching her how to do that. And we did index the, death, the race on the death certificates. And I think in the index that information is there and then you can pull it over. But it would be really handy if it appeared on this little quick guide because it would help you narrow down if you have the name Samuel Brown. Well, sure enough, there's lots of Samuel Browns who are of a variety of different ethnicities and you would want to filter down to yours and if they were mis, uh, misidentified, if they were recorded wrong and you still can't find them and you think that they were black and you were, can't find them as black, then you would try a different race to see if they could pop up. Um, but no, there isn't that option and that's kind of frustrating. Great question though. All right, go on. Sorry, uh, I just those, saw that and that was really pertinent to what we were looking at there. No, go ahead and do a search. Now, if you have any questions on how to use Family Search, now is the time. So put Q in front of your question and Andy will do a search to see if you can find any of your questions. If you have a tip, let us know as well. We'll go ahead and check those out. I feel like I'm yelling. If I'm too loud, you guys let me know. <laughs> just be nice about it. Okay, remember to keep the questions on family search or research strategies. We're not handling DNA today. Jane, oh yes, I did get your email, by the way, Jane, and uh, we will answer that at the next DNA one because that's actually a good question to uh, talk about. <laughs> okay. We're playing catch up. <laughs> Someday we'll need to get a moderator who can find all the questions and serve them up to us. So, so Chris asked a question. I have to wonder how many people trolled the Census Bureau. Well, not only that, but also, again, you're talking about the United States, which is a country of immigrants. And in certain pockets at certain times, even though the census takers were there, they may not have spoken the language. And so I remember one presentation somebody showed that the name on the census is some Italian guy. <laughs> I can't remember which one it is, and I've been meaning to go and search for it. But uh, once you get down into the census, there is lots of, of these things that people have put on, probably because they just didn't understand what the people were saying. All right. Thanks for letting us know that you have um, learned something new. So I'm really glad the pressure was on when we began. I was told they to teach somebody something new. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, can I put exact birth dates? Yeah, you can definitely use ba exact birth dates. Whenever you're um, in any of the filters, you can always play around with the different filters to try to find your relatives. Um, where, where, what are we showing? Aha, what are we showing? Um, so there was my cheat. I'd already <laughs> found it. But when you're doing um, searches, records, you can use any or all of the fields. It's just when you get stuck and you're use, um, when you get stuck and you can't find your ancestors, then you need to start playing with different search strategies to try to find them. Add a de date, take out a date. Add ten years, take off five years. I mean, move things around. Take uh, sometimes I will just leave off a birthplace because, and I've had some people that their birth is in England. Um, let's see, England, Pennsylvania, Iowa, and California. And it's the same person because everybody else is the same. But this person just keeps telling these census, right, right, you know, census taker they're from different places. So, so when you're when you can't find your ancestors, you got to play around. All right. So Chris has got a question about what do you do when some names are harder to do with the asterisks than others like mine? So let's use Chris's name here, uh, Bariolo. And if we don't have any kind of asterisk, then we get all these ancestors of his, I'm guessing. Hopefully. All, for, for, all of those people are related. Right. They have to be, you know. So if we want to put in a uh, asterisk, let me uh, put it in in place of the R's. Look at that. Try your search again. So it doesn't like it with two things. So there are some things that it's not going to um, do well just because it's still just a machine. So on the end of the word, I can put the asterisk, mm -hmm. but not on the middle of it. Hmm. Um, what can you do there? Not much. Uh, you can tell the engineers that they've got a problem. Yeah. And that probably has to do with how they're they're grabbing and and uh, you know parsing that information to to do the search for it. What did I think of this? You kind of give a little feedback and tell them you can't do this with my name, and you get that it's a little bit off screen what we're showing, but right here, right there in the corner on your screen is going to be the feedback if you're on a desktop. All right, so. Jan asks, how would you suggest looking through unindexed metric books? Metric books. Okay. I don't know where metric books, but I can show you any kind of unindexed records. So I will show you what I've been looking at recently. Okay. So we're going to go to, all right, let's zoom out a little bit. So my things are where they're supposed to be. So here's the card catalog and we're going to go to, um, can you type in Hamilton County? There's no matching places. Hamilton. I, I need Hamilton County, um, uh, Ohio. Yep, that one. They don't like the uh, county. I guess not. So don't put county, unless maybe it's county, Karen, or county. There were some wonderful. That's in Ireland. I know. There were some wonderful Irish people who told me about this one location in the Catholic records, and I still can't say it yet because they told me, and I was like, oh, I'm going to learn how to say it, and I haven't done it yet. All right, so now we're going to go to. Um, Land records, uh huh. No, yeah, that one. So here is, if you're lucky and you're looking at a record collection where there is an index for that, then you would go ahead and look in the index to your book. Now, in tax records, there is no index, so you have to get very familiar with. Um, with how it's arranged and then you just have to scroll but we're just going to at least show you how to dive in and look for something so just pick any of them just so ahead. these first few ones are just the bits of information maybe the cover of the book mm -hmm. you can see hey this one says begin right and they're actually scanning the cover of the book and the very first page mm -hmm. and i double click on that and i yeah. get this nice big page here yeah. Those dividers are kind of handy, especially if there's two books put together on the same roll. I 
mean, we don't really see it very much roll anymore, but if there are two books on the same roll, you'll look for that as a break if you, ha if you happen to be searching in the second book half the time. So you zoom in, and this is an index, uh, this is an index book, so I would look for either the grantor, grantee. Um, so there's Henry Avery, book 64, page seven, then I can go and get to it. So let's go to a So uh -huh. if we wanna go through this whole thing, mm -hmm. we can just use the Oh, our... Disney! The name was Disney. Oh, out there Disney. <laughs> William Disney. Sorry. There's no Walt. <laughs> My bad, sorry I got distracted, but in any case, <laughs> So this is an index, but it's not a searchable index record. Most collections are going to have it an index. I'm not sure about the metric books, but so I'm just kind of giving a generalized um, book for um, search strategy. So let's actually go to gen. Uh, anyway, book so 64. here's sixty-four. Uh huh. <clears throat> sixty-four. Oh, so they go th all through the alphabet and then they start going mm -hmm. up. So there's sixty-four. And this is that two book thing. So there's two books, 64 and 65. So you click on that. And we're looking for book 64. Uh-huh. Look at that, this is book 64 and page seven. So it's only gonna be like a few in here. Mm-hmm. I can see these page numbers up in the corner. Four, five, six, seven. Right. It is probably right here. Yep, Henry Avery and Robert William Reynolds. And so Henry was deeding the property to Robert and William. And then here's one thing, if that's your family, this may not be indexed, but you can still attach it to your tree and you go through this process right here and you find your person and so on and so forth. Now let's go to a tax record. Oh, well actually there are two videos coming out next week on how to search in tax records. Tax records don't have an index to them. Um, and so I'm gonna have you look at those and see, learn how the strategies I use to go ahead and research into tax records. They are, they're not like deeds that have an index to the record. They are just, here's your tax record and then you learn, look for your person in them. So I hope that helps in a generalized, even if it's not narrowed to your specific area. All right, so Drew's got a question. When I search for, say, a birth, family search still throws up deaths, marriages, and christenings. How do I avoid that? Um. I know the answer to that one. I, I, how about you answer it? Okay. Because I have an idea, and let's see what your so, idea is. Here's my idea. If I'm gonna go search by records, mm -hmm. and um, we're gonna look for a quick in New York. Um, this is going to be 1850 to 1880. So I'm looking for some quick in New York. Hey, here's a birth, here's a birth, here's a birth, 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 birth christening. But as I keep on going down the list further into this, we'll see that, hey, there's not just births. Now we have a census record or we might have something else. So the way that I would do this is actually by limiting it by collections. So if I go to collections and I'm just looking for births, well then I can find here what births are there. Well, there's the New York City births, the New York births and christenings. I might care about the New Jersey ones because there was actually some overlap sometimes. Um, this is municipal deaths, county marriages, and I just go down here and I'd find, you know, whatever birth ones I could find and filter by just those. So now I'm just looking at those three collections. This is now going to be just the births. Okay. So 1,149. There were lots of quicks in New York back in the 1800s. Okay. So there, it's a, that's one way to do it. I'm not saying it's wrong. Don't, don't. That Give is it not a what thumbs up on the video if you think that's the right If way. you like that, that strategy, go ahead and hit thumbs up. All right, so there's another thing you can do is search by, filter by type, and you can click on birth, baptism, and christening and update there. So that's one way to do it. And so I still kind of get to the same answer. Um, and then I can go and look at the collections. Now I just see all the birth collections right there. Um, can see where he may have come from. Another option, let's do that, is 
there's so many ways. I really like that there's lots of options. There's collection type birth, marriage, and death. Now this has 8,000, so that's a lot more than we were looking for. But again, you can look over here. Oh, okay, they're not exactly filtering down to it. Um, they're filtering it, any record that has a birth. Right, and so now we can go in, filter. Okay, maybe I just want the folks from Canada. I don't know. <laughs> not really, because that doesn't make any sense if you're looking for birthplace. But you get the idea. You can use these filters down here. So there's lots of ways to filter. Um, I don't want the filters. There's lots of ways to filter. All right, next question. I cannot find very much on Family Search in Königsberg, East Prussia, Germany. Okay. Why is that? Because they might not have anything. So let's go to two places: the Family Search uh, card catalog to see what they have in catalog. their um, collection. So, so this is Königsberg. Uh huh. Whoops, not Bert. Königsberg. And there's lots of Königsbergs. There here. are lots of them. So, um, East Prussia. Well, there's Prussia. Oh, there. Look at that. Okay. And do search. So do search. And so now this is the catalog for what the family search has in their library. And that doesn't just mean their virtual library. It also means their holdings at the Family History Center in Salt Lake. So um, you can go ahead and click on one. The Gerachstock. I'm not sure what the Gerachstock is, but court it's records the court of, of Jewish, Jewish births. births and there you deaths. go. And then because, can you zoom in on that little icon? Because you have this camera right here, that's a microfilm that you could actually view from home. If it had a key on it, you'd have to view it from a Family History uh, affiliate or the actual Family History Library in Family Search. And then if it has a wheel or a book, well, that's something physical that is at family, the Family History Library in Salt Lake that you'll have to access. So that's the first place to look to see where are these records. Now there's nothing here saying that there's an index version of these records. So you could only look at these film by film mm -hmm. on this. And when we say index, what we mean is a form that you can key stuff into and have it return results to you. The other, the, these are, you can look at them. You just have to do old fashioned scrolling <laughs> or page advancing. Now the other thing you could do is look for the Family Search Wiki. Mm -hmm. Scoot over. I need to scoot over. Okay, I need to <laughs> scoot over. <laughs> the Family Search Wiki. There we go, right there. Königsberg, I, East I Prussia. That's, that's okay. That's historical records. Germany, East Prussia, Königsberg. So they don't have a wiki page. And that is not surprising because this is a volunteer contributed uh, research guide. And so hopefully somebody who knows something about your location can create a wiki page and then have a whole bunch of links to help you further research the area. But um, the short answer is they don't have a lot because on there because they don't have a lot available at this time, but it doesn't mean it's not coming in the future. All right. Can, this is from John, can the name of Armand, Armantine with asterisk, be searched in Martinique for a time before 1860? Now, I think what it is, can it, yeah, you can search for it, whether there's going to actually be any records or not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Right. But, uh, yeah, you can definitely search for that. Mm -hmm. I would I would look for, I would probably, if you're looking for it before a time so, you know, this is a good question of, if you're looking for something before a time period, mm -hmm. what would you do to isolate records just before that time period, like before 1860? Okay. Well, I would first try to see if those records, if a record exists at all. And that's when I'm going to go to the card catalog a little bit. But really, my first stop for those type of questions, does a record exist, is the Family Search Wiki. So, in for my time and place, did that place exist? And what records are available for that time period? Now, as we mentioned for the Prussian example, 
The Family Search Wiki is a volunteer volunteer contributed research guide. And so it is not the end all be all of all things genealogy, but it's a great starting off point to help me know what information is available. Did you find that location? Well, if this is the one, Martinique, mm -hmm. down in uh, the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't have anything on how to find it because they're red, so that means that there's nothing there. Right. And it, so it doesn't have like a list of, hey, there are these types of records from this date or right. these types of records from this date. But go up to the top because they had some links to some research tools. So there's the archive department, the, um, right here, mm-hmm. And so now you're at a place where people have, again, volunteered and added information to help you research in that location. So you're right, it doesn't have as much as some other locations have on their wiki page, but there are some links that point you to some other places to search. All right, um, Jan from the Netherlands asks, any tips on using family search for countries like the Netherlands whose records have not been indexed properly? Um, <laughs> yeah, I know that it's it's manually searching it and it's a pain and unfortunately that's all you can do. Yeah, exactly. Um, honestly, no, what the answer is, is you got to get more people indexing. Yeah. Because let's go over to the indexing real quick. So at the top, well, at the top, we've, we've ex expanded it. So that's everything dropping on the side, but indexing. So go to web indexing, find a batch. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what you're looking for, change state language. Uh -huh. Look at all these language that could, could have records available to research in them. What family search needs is volunteers to index these records and that's what's going to get them to be searchable. Um, but without the volunteers, they're they're not they're going to be browsed and you're right it's a pain so um for every i try to make a habit of indexing at least once a week a batch a day was a program i did a couple weeks ago during quarantine to try to <laughs> get us all doing some indexing and some people discovered how fun it was um so that that's what needs to kind of happen just about any place around the world is more people need to index if we want to take take advantage of the power of search okay so that is all the questions that we have so far that I've been able to find. All right. Well, thank you so much, so much for joining. We're really sorry about the glitches we had. <laughs> but it lets you know it's live, we're human, and we just are absolutely fanatical about family history. Um, we wanted to let you know about what that join button means. So the, the join button, go ahead and bring that slide up, please. Um, just a second here. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so the join button um, that you may be seeing is an opportunity to become a channel member. And you see those folks that have the new sign beside them. Um, they also have been using the DNA um, emoji icon and they also have been using the fan icon. We have specialized changing, go to the next slide. We have some special training that is just for our channel members. They're coming up here in a few weeks. We have some premium membership webinars. So those are pre-recorded, but you can definitely ask questions um, and we will be answering those uh, for our channel members. And then there's also some premium member only live streams. Now the next one coming up is going to be beta reading your writing samples. So we will actually take samples of uh, members who have submitted their writing and they wanna get some feedback and we'll teach you how to improve your writing collaboratively together and then you can go forth and do it. And then in July, um, just like Jane sent a question about that she's having, and Andy will tackle questions that we can't typically happen in a full live stream. So we hope you will consider joining us for FHF Extra and all of our members, big, big, huge heart. Love you guys so much. You really do help us um, eat and live indoors. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> and Jody's got one quick question. Oh, okay. Because she said, uh, I think indexing will be fun. How do you start? So, how do you start? How, how do, do you start? How do you start indexing? Well, we have a video on it, but let's go ahead and do it right now. Okay. Not? All right. So, so you got to be signed into Family Search first yes. off. Mm -hmm. And then you go to indexing.familysearch or on the menu, find the indexing tab. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take you right over to the indexing yep. page. Maybe. We'll Family click out of it. You're on it. 
There you okay. go. <laughs> web indexing. And then you click on web indexing. And then click on find batches. Yeah, find batches. Okay, so we're gonna go to do a beginner one, hopefully. <laughs> um, your beginner one is, oh, there are no projects. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Switch oh, because it was in Dutch. <laughs> English. So the beginner projects are when you do your first or second batch. As soon as you've done one or two, then go do intermediate batches. The, the beginning is just for people who have never done this platform. So if you've just been doing beginners, you need to get off the beginners and go do intermediate. Now, let's go and <laughs> Is there any of, yeah, the beginnings are all mostly done. Uh, look, go do intermediate, because so I just was helping somebody do an intermediate one. Um, and it was, go ahead and do that one, that'd be fine. So you just find the batch, you just click on the index, mm -hmm. and it's going to tell you, hey, there's gonna be instructions. Yes. And this is all loading up on your web browser, so you don't need to download anything to your computer. Yes. And so we're not going to do it right now, but you should read the index instructions and notice, go up just a second. These are some samples, those are some samples that you will likely see and how to index them. So the family search really tries to give you all the information you need. So this is, this is a record that is um, a declaration of intention, I believe. It looks like a declaration of intent. But in any case, it is a image that has content that they want to approve. If it's a duplicate image, so you have to be careful when you go from image to image, go image to image for a second here. Okay, that's not a duplicate. But let's say it was, then you would mark it as a duplicate. And then if it's an image that they don't want you to index, then you would say no extractable information. So go ahead, we did get yes, yes, yes. So zoom in. So all I did, the first part is I just said, yes, this is indexable. Now I zoom in. Well, since we didn't read the thing, then right, we don't know what the Hold thing on. is. Hold on. I bet I can figure it out. Okay. Oh, okay. Make this um, that container bar go smaller down so we can look. Yeah. So first thing it wants to do, so it will walk you through the content it wants you to pull off. Is it a certificate of naturalization? Is this a petition? Is it a declaration? This looks like a petition. The foregoing petition and affidavit. Okay. So now we're going to do the given names, and that looks like Chas. You guys can go ahead. You can try to help us read this, and Andy, scroll down on the chat so we can see what people are potentially commenting. <laughs> oh, tonight, Stacy, there is the um, Bay Area uh, Genealogy Society meeting, and I'm speaking there. And Teresa is a member of that society, so it's only open to Bay Area members. Okay, so did you go ahead and put that name? Kersholksik. So one of the things you're doing when you're looking at names, number one, type what you see and do the very best you can. A poorly indexed record set is a so much easier to search than one that is not indexed. It's a pain to look for um, unindexed records. So you do the very best you can and that's all you can do. Now this record doesn't have sex, so we're gonna go ahead and put a blank because there's a little asterisk besides the word sex. So go ahead and put blank. Control B for blank. Or there's also an X icon at the top. You'll hover over it so people can see that one. You can type that for X. There's no age. There's no place. There's no birth month. There's no birth date. There's no spouse's name. But there is a naturalization month. So we're going to go ahead and type in those names. The 25th of September, 1906. And then place is in Somerset County, New Jersey. Somerville. Oh, my bad. Oh, I see it says Somerville, and that's the Somerville. <laughs> yeah, Cosmic, I, I hate when they abbreviate names because I'd really like to make sure I get it right, but you know, what can you do? All right. And that's it for this one record. And then you just keep indexing all of the ones on that image, then you go to the next image, and then you submit your batch. Now, we're gonna show you how to send back a batch. Let's say it's too hard, um, it's too confusing, or you just don't have time to do it. There is a way to send it back. So go to batch, the word batch, and then return batch. It doesn't hurt you. And what he went ahead and did, it automatically saves, hit return, and it's going to go back, and the next person's going to have that.
that name to start with. So, so that's how you get started. It's really easy to get started. All righty. All right, so we will talk to you later and um, have a great day. If you have any more questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section rather than the chat. See you later. Bye-bye.